Hi world, my name is Essie. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited to have you here today. If it's your first time, welcome. If it's your second, third, gazillion time, welcome back. So today I'm going to talk about something I'm really excited about. Um, that is shame and guilt. So as I was going through the story of the fall of man, just seeing the events and how they unfolded really touched my heart because I was seeing how Adam and Eve had to experience guilt and shame and fear for the very first time in their lives without anything to ever compare it to because all they had ever known was perfection. All they had ever known was tranquility and union with God. And for the first time they have sinned and for the first time they're feeling things and they're experiencing things that are so contrary to everything they have ever known. And when I saw this, literally my heart just broke for them. What really stood out for me in this story is not even how or what they were experiencing, but how God responds to them. You see, the nature of God is consistent from the very beginning of the Bible to the very end. The nature of God is love. And we see this even when man falls. When they fell, what they did first was they recognized they were naked. And, you know, they began to sew leaves together to form some sort of covering for themselves. But when they had made these garments for themselves, they didn't feel like it was sufficient. Because when they heard the voice of God, they ran away and tried to hide themselves. So when they were hiding, God is like, Adam, where are you? And so he's like, I'm hiding because I was afraid. When I heard your voice, I hid because I was afraid. And, you know, because I'm naked. And God is like, who told you you were naked? Because this is not something that had ever come up with there in their conversations. You see, these people were naked before God. They were laid bare, completely bare before God, but there was never any shame involved. But the moment sin creeps into the picture, shame is now a very predominant factor. It's so contrary to their nature. It's so contrary to everything that is found within love because, you know, you don't hide where there is love. You only hide where there is fear. And so you begin to see the difference in the fruit of sin and in the fruit of love, a second product of guilt and shame is that it leads you towards self-righteousness rather than relying on the finished work of Christ. If you find yourself trying to fix a mess, have you ever tried to fix a mess and then everything just gets worse? But I remember this one time I stole my mom's nail polish and it fell down and it broke. And so I tried to, you know, wipe it off before my mom would see. And it made a bigger mess. There was this huge stain that I couldn't run away from. And I was wondering, what on earth am I going to say to my mother? Because my mother was a strict woman. And I, I, I honestly didn't know the language I was going to use. When she came, she was actually very understanding. Some strange reason. I didn't get in any trouble. I didn't even get scolded. I, I don't know. I think she just saw the remorse and how terrible I looked. That she just forgave me. Actually, that's how God deals with us, you know. He He cleans the mess up himself because when we try to do it, we make a bigger mess. And so we see God comes even into the garden and what, when he comes into the garden, he clothes them. You know, in Corinthians, we read that he who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. So even in the story of the fall of man, there, there are allegories that point to Christ and what he would do for humanity at large in the future because here was man in his fallen state and he could do nothing to help himself and that is what where we were before we were born again and that is where anyone who's not born again is you're in a situation where you're surrounded by your own sin and with the guilt of that guilt and shame of that sin and there is nothing you could do to hide from it there is nothing you can do to erase it and anything you're trying to do it's just not working and God becomes a man and dies in your place such that if you believe in him and believe in his finished work you become a beneficiary and so we can stand before God now as holy we can stand before God as righteous because of what Christ did for us on the cross actually a good 
picture of, re of repentance is also seen in the story of the fall of man in that scene. Because we see that Adam consented to be clothed, right? He could have said, no, I already have my covering of leaves. I don't want your cloth of animal skin. But he allowed God to clothe him. And that is what repentance or turning to God looks like, you know? You understand that, okay, I've tried to do things my own way, but God is offering me his, his solution. This is God's remedy, his son, Jesus Christ. Will I accept it? And when you accept his remedy, that is what salvation is. That is what it is to be saved. It is to accept what God has done on your behalf. And so you don't need to carry guilt and shame because God carried guilt and shame for you. And I know that sin, you know, knowing what you did in your past, just having it somewhere in the back of your mind can be crippling. It can hinder you from moving forward. What you did is not... It's not bigger than what Jesus did for you, okay? What, whatever it is that you've done, no matter how bad, even if it was murder, it is not bigger than what Jesus handled for you on the cross or what Jesus bore on the cross, his sacrifice for that sin. And you know, in Hebrews chapter 10, we read that we were cleansed from an evil conscience, yeah, we were cleansed from an evil conscience and an evil conscience here is in reference to a consciousness of sin. When we keep sin at the forefront, we are insinuating that our sin is bigger than the goodness of God. But God also knew that the consciousness of sin has a way of sticking. It has sticky hands, you know, it's, it clings to you, it like it digs its nail onto you and it won't let go. But Christ dealt with that. He knew the consciousness of sin would be a, an issue, but he dealt with that. We no longer need to bear that because it's been cleansed. What we have, the solution, is the word of God where we are told to renew our mind. And we renew our mind by al aligning our minds to what scripture says about who we are now in Christ. Who we are now in Christ is the righteousness of God. When you stand before God, you don't stand to him as the one who did A, B, C, D, but the one who has trusted in his son. When you stand before God, you stand before him, not as unrighteous, but as righteous because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You see, so everything shifts the moment you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is where the word of God brings us to renewing your mind is bringing your mind to agree, to submit and to agree to what the word of God says about it. The consciousness of sin begins to fall. It begins to lose hold. It begins to lose power over you. The voice of the enemy becomes quieter and quieter and it goes away, you know, or at least when it comes, you're able to fight that. You're able to resist it because you're like, nah, -uh. Nah, -uh, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am not the person you're trying to describe. I am no longer naked. I am clothed in his righteousness. My guilt is no longer before me. It was dealt with at the cross. And that is the beauty of what Jesus Christ has done for us. It is no longer something we need to carry. It is something that Christ has carried for us. Amen. So no matter what it is that you're going through, no matter what you're getting, no matter what your past is, I want you to understand that your past is not greater than what Christ did. You know, the Bible calls Jesus the Alpha and the Omega. His work, okay, it says Jesus, has, as far as the East is from the West, he has taken away your sin. You know, and as far as eternity from eternity, really. So if he's the Alpha and he is the Omega, anything you've ever done is in between, but he he transcends it in that he go, he begins way before you ever sinned and ends long after that sin. So this power dissipates. The power of, of, of the guilt and shame, it dissipates in light of an eternal God and a forgiveness that spreads throughout eternity. Amen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd really like to hear what you think about this video in the comment section. And please share and like this video. And yeah, that's all for today. Bye.